Hello and welcome. Dragon's Dogma 2 is finally here and I am excited. Dragon's Dogma 2 was my most anticipated game for 2024 and after completing it and spending nearly 60 hours on this game there are a few things to discuss. Now Dragon's Dogma 2 is an action RPG that a lot of people will absolutely love. While there are a lot of people that are almost certainly going to despise this game. Now my goal in this video is to answer the very simple question. Is Dragon's Dogma 2 worth your time? And to answer that question I will be going over some of the most important elements of this game. And we are starting with... Capcom loves putting microtransactions in their video games, so why is there such a big uproar about Dragon's Dogma 2's microtransactions? Well, in my opinion it's all because of the art of Metamorphosis. Capcom released the character creator two weeks before the game released. With this character creator you were able to create your character and your main pawn and it would then carry over to the main game once it released. Pretty cool right? Well once the game released I believe a whole lot of people realized that their characters do not look alright in game. This would then lead to players looking for a way to change their characters and some most likely came across the art of metamorphosis on the Dragon's Dogma 2's Steam page and did not realize it was available in game. And I believe this is the cause of all the ruckus as most of the reviews highlighting the microtransactions, well almost all of them talked about the art of metamorphosis and its price, which is two dollars by the way. Now I have to highlight that Capcom made some strange decisions in regards to this item. There were only a few of them available at the shopkeeper that sold them. It cost RC which can also be bought through microtransactions and there was no new game option which would be the easiest way to recreate your character. And yes most of these problems were fixed by the first patch and of course the argument that micro transactions are optional is very true. You do not need to buy any of the microtransactions at all. Now do I believe these microtransactions belong in this game? Well absolutely not. I am willing to bet that most people defending the microtransactions are only doing so because they love this game. But the thing is just because you think the game is good does not mean you have to defend every element of it. Sure the microtransactions aren't nearly as aggressive as some people make it out to be but it still shouldn't be in the game. Alright, let's move on to the real issue of this game, the performance. This game runs like my ass after eating too much spicy food. Again, I have seen some attempts at defending this, but the majority of people doing so are just trolls trying to farm clown awards on Steam, because you know those anime cat girl profile wallpapers aren't going to buy themselves. The thing is this game runs like ass, and the use of the worst DRMs software on earth, De Novo is definitely not helping. Now I have heard that people playing on Xbox and PS5 also have some performance issues so I think it's fair to say that the game just isn't optimized at all. Right so those are the big issues with this game. Now that I've talked about them let's get into the meat of this game starting with When I think of good character creators and what makes those character creators good, it all points to one element, variety. This game's character creator has variety. You can basically customize every single detail of your character and you can truly create a character that is unique. I think the only slight complaint I have for the character creator is that the UI and the background of the original game was replaced by the 
most boring font and dull grey background, but it's by no means a serious complaint. From a character appearance standpoint, I do think that Dragon's Dogma 2 has the most in-depth character customization in any game I have ever played and has the best character creator out there right now. In my Dragon's Dogma video I made a month ago, I said that the story of Dragon's Dogma was convoluted and the big reason why I think it's so convoluted is purely down to the fact that the story was not told in a good way at all. There are so much details and important bits of the story that are in side quests which makes no sense at all because well you aren't forced to play these side quests and you could finish the game and have a whole bunch of un answered questions because you didn't play these side quests. Now Dragon's Dogma 2 has a similar storyline, but I do think it is told in a much better way. I think it's way less convoluted than the first game and much more digestible as this game gives you enough information in the main quest to properly understand what the hell is even going on. Now there are some issues I have with the story. Firstly, the characters are not very fleshed out despite the romanceable characters that have some additional side quests most other characters in the story feel very one-dimensional i also think there are a bunch of unanswered uh, how do i put this uh, external questions this game has similar to the first game I think these external questions exist because there are some elements that aren't properly explained or explored. Now I think it is fair to say that Dragon's Dogma is not a very story focused game, but despite that the story of this game had me interested to find out what would unfold next. It had my attention and much like the first game, the story's theme was pretty interesting. So overall Dragon's Dogma 2 story is good enough for the type of game it is. This game looks good. It's definitely not the best looking game out there, but it looks good enough in my opinion. There are some nice touches to the game like how puddles of water will form on the ground when it rains, which is pretty cool. Now I have talked about the game's terrible performance already, but this game runs like shit. And one of the worst things about this game is the terrible popping, which is very annoying and happy constantly. However, once those issues are resolved, you have a pretty good looking game in terms of graphics. The environments in this game are also very cool looking. There are three different areas with different biomes and they are all very distinctive from one another and all look good in their own way. I also like how both Vernworth and Bark Batal have their own distinctive looks and that the structures and the architecture of the buildings in these areas are different from one another. Now overall I do not have too much to say about the visual aspect of this game. It's a game with graphics that are good enough for me and it has some very beautiful environments. Comparing the quests and the levels from this game to the first one, it's very similar. Let's start with the quests. Much like the first game, the quests are very simplistic. The types of quests where you go to a destination, do something and you are done. And for the most part, these quests suit the game perfectly. However, there are a few early on in the game that just kind of suck. More specifically, the first few quests you get from Captain Brandt. And these quests, specifically, 
specifically are terrible because they are bare boned and way too simplistic, to the point where they feel like side quests instead of actual main quests. However, despite these three or four quests from Captain Brandt, the majority of the game's main quests are pretty good. There are also some great side quests in this game as well. Without spoiling anything, one of my favorite side quests involve a sculptor and a griffin. If you know, you know. There's also some random quests you can come across while traveling. Some of these quests require you to save an NPC from danger, whether it be something or someone attacking them, and some of these quests are escort missions, which require you to escort an NPC to a certain location on the map. In one of these escort missions, the NPC I was escorting got killed, and the game was like, it's fine. So I carried the NPC to his destination and then revived him with a wakestone. It was pretty cool. Now some of you might be wondering why the game's very simplistically designed quests are that good. And in my opinion, there are two reasons. The combat, which I will talk about in a moment, and the levels, or more specifically, the open world. The reason these quests that send you on these long journeys are so good is because this game's world is fun to travel and explore in. It is an open world game and has some linear areas that you can explore, like the caves you can come across. Now, this is not your traditional open open world game, as it is designed in a different way. A game like Elden Ring throws you in the vast open world and tells you to go and explore, while attracting your attention by placing a bunch of structures within it, which are called points of interest. Now Dragon's Dogma 2 is different in the sense that this game is kind of designed like a linear game. Sure, there are some open areas in which you can find a bunch of items, enemies and boss fights, but this game will constantly force you down more linear areas before you come across a more open area again. And yes, some people might not like this approach, but I feel it is executed perfectly because the way things are implemented in this open world would not work with an Elden Ring type world design. There are a bunch of items scattered around the place, secret areas and caves. However, unlike Elden Ring, you do not not spot these items from a distance. You come across them by exploring, climbing up places where there possibly could be items and sometimes getting out from your pawns. There are also a bunch of items placed on spots that are just out of the player's reach and the game expects you to come up with creative ways of getting these items. And well, this game gives you a bunch of different ways to do so. Again, I have to reiterate that this time type of open world design might not be for everybody, but I think it is fantastic. It's a different approach to the open world design, and it sometimes feels like a puzzle to traverse through this world, which is why it is just as fun to explore this game's world than it is to explore a game like Elden Rings, despite its different design. Overall, I think the world design complements the quest design perfectly and is why I love both the levels and the quests in this game. Now the gameplay is similar to the first game, with some improvements to some of the elements, with other elements remaining untouched. Let's start with the combat. The combat feels great in this game. It feels similar to the first game, with some minor tweaks and adjustments to make it feel much smoother. I also like how you can now walk on bosses, which allows you to do different attacks that you can't do when you're just hanging onto these giant bosses. There are also some smaller details added as well, like how the bosses can bonk their heads on the walls when you knock them down, and they will take damage when it happens. I also like how some bosses, like the griffins, can come crashing down and cause a bunch of havoc. The one time I was fighting goblins to protect 
protect a cart just for a griffin to come crashing down and destroying the cart. It's small little improvements like these that make the game's combat feel so much better in this game. The game also provides you with a bunch of different vocations, with some new vocations that are pretty damn cool. All of these vocations feel unique and distinctive from one another, and all have a bunch of skills that you can acquire in many different ways. Some of the vocations are greatly improved upon from the first game and feel so much better to play as. The enemies are a little disappointing in my opinion. The enemy variety is pretty good, but it doesn't feel like it. You will encounter different enemies depending on whether it is nighttime or daytime. Different areas have different enemies, but these enemies are reskins. Some of the reskinned enemies are poorly done, like the red wolves, which are basically normal wolves, but they do more damage and have more health. Then there are the different Saurians that are also reskins, but each reskin at least has their own unique skills and attacks, and they actually do feel different from one another. I think for most people the enemies might be the biggest problem of this game, as you will encounter and constantly fight these same enemies over and over again. The same can be said for the bosses. Now I think the combat is good enough in this game to make these encounters fun. The enemies themselves have a bunch of different moves, and some of the enemy types like the skeletons have a lot of variety within them. But I feel like this game needed a bit more enemy types, and the same can be said for the bosses in this game. I think the random boss fights are pretty cool, and the fact that it can happen randomly is super cool and the new bosses added to the game are pretty awesome but I do think it needed a few more bosses to add to the overall variety. There are also a bunch of weapons and armors for every vocation, a bunch of items that can be used by all vocations and some unique items I won't be spoiling in this video. This game gives you a bunch of tools to work with which helps the combat feel more extensive. Armors and weapons can be upgraded just like the first game, which also means that, like the first game, you will gather a bunch of materials that will make your carry capacity more heavy and make your stamina drain quicker. The pawns are improved as well and are much more useful, even though they still don't know how to shut up. Pawns can point out hidden items and treasure chests and ladders. They really love ladders for some reason. They can also also help with quests, giving the player hints and can even guide the player to the destinations. I also feel like they are overall more effective in combat as well, as this game has a bunch of ways the player can find themselves in trouble while fighting enemies and boss fights, and the pawns are very effective when it comes to helping the player. Despite their constant chattering and needlessly pointing out ladders, the pawn system is much better in this game and still a pretty cool mechanic overall. So when it comes to the gameplay of this game, I would say it is fantastic. I think the combat is the greatest element of this game, and despite the game needing more boss fights and enemy variety, this is one of the best combat systems out there in my opinion. So what do I think of Dragon's Dogma 2? Is it a good game? Well, no. It's fantastic. But there are a few things to consider. If you do not like the first game, this game will not appeal to you at all, because it uses all the same mechanics and elements of the first game. There is also the performance issues to consider, as I have a PC that exceeds the maximum requirements for this game, and couldn't even play it with 60 FPS, and well sometimes I couldn't even get 30. Is Dragon's Dogma 2 worth playing? In my opinion, absolutely yes. However, I would wait for the performance issues to be resolved. This game is certainly a game of the year contender in my opinion, and I really love this game. So yeah, 
that's all I have to say about Dragon's Dogma 2. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.